Hey there, Becca here from Inside the Square and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to teach you how you can change the design of the header in your Squarespace website. Squarespace made some big changes in January 2024. So in this video, I'm going to teach you how you can add social media icons, a button to your header, a cart icon, and I'll show you some of the cool new design features we have. We can do things like add a border and add a shadow and, well, I should just show you. I'll go ahead and share my screen so we can get started. Here we are inside Squarespace. Because your header is a global element, you'll be able to edit this from any page on your website. Select Edit to get started and hover over the header until you see the option that says Edit Site Header. When you click on this, you'll see two new things pop up. We have Elements on the left-hand side and Edit Design on the right-hand side. Now here in my website header, I also have my site title and logo option. You'll notice as soon as I hover over this with my cursor, it's outlined in blue. That means this is something I can edit. If I click on this, a small button will pop up, which allows me to edit the site title and logo. Click on this option and you'll see the ability to change the title. I currently have text displayed on my site, but you can also upload a logo image. You can also upload a logo image specifically for the mobile version of your site. Now, how did we reach that? One last time, we're in edit mode. I selected edit site header. I clicked on the title and logo, and then I clicked on this button to change that content. If you have your site title displayed as text, type that right here. Otherwise, you can upload an image for your logo and an image for the mobile version of your website, which will show up on your mobile menu and anytime someone looks at your website on a small device. Now let's take a look at our other options. Inside this elements menu, we only have the ability to turn these elements on or off. When it comes to the design and functionality of the button, you'll notice it's outlined in blue, just like the site title was, which means I can click on it. And here I'll be able to click on the edit option and change the content. For a button, you can have text and you can click on this link editor option to link that button to trigger an email, to a web address, to any page on the internet. You can also upload a file so when someone clicks on that button, the file will be downloaded. You can have it linked to a page on your website or even be a click to call option. Again, I clicked this gear icon to open up the link editor. The design of the button will be based on my site styles menu, either primary, secondary, or tertiary button styles. Now let's take a look at our other options under add elements. We can also toggle on social media links. And you guessed it, because it's outlined in blue, that means to edit our social media links, we'll need to click on this option and then click the edit icon. And here we can add a new link. We can select edit to remove that link. And we can drag and drop these links into whatever order we want them to be in. Under the design tab is where you can change the size of this social media icon. You can change the shape of the social media icon, and you can select to have it be a solid option or an outline. If you choose outline, you'll see a new option pop up to change the thickness of that outline. There are three more elements on our list. We can toggle on the cart option, just like social media icons and the button. We'll need to click on the cart and then click on this icon to edit the cart design. Here you can choose to have an icon display or simply display text. Currently it says cart, but I can change this to anything I want it to be. Maybe shopping cart, completely customizable. If you select icon, you can grab one of these images to change it. And clicking back to our main options here, you'll see this is where we adjust the size of that individual icon for the cart. And just like the social media icons, we can change the border, change the thickness of that border, or decide to have this display as a solid option. One last option here for your cart is whether or not you want it to say zero when there's nothing in the cart. You can toggle that option off or leave it on. There are two more elements in this list. Account, if you enable account, you'll need to make sure that you've allowed customer accounts on your Squarespace website. And if you toggle on language switch, you'll need to set up a multilingual site under your language settings. Now I'll go ahead and toggle these off and let's take a look at the other new option for our website header and that's to edit the design. If I click on edit design on the right hand side, the first thing we'll see is the ability to change the layout. This will place my logo on the left as well as my links and elements on the right. This will bring those links over to the left and I just realized I don't have any links in my main navigation so let's add a few so you can see how this works. I'll go ahead and select exit, we'll save our changes, and we'll hop into website. Now here in my main navigation I'll just click the plus sign and we'll add a blank page and we'll call it one 
and we'll go ahead and add another blank page and we'll call this two. Now you can see I have links one and two in my main navigation. I can drag and drop these into a different order if I want to change it. You'll also notice that the color of my website header has changed and we'll totally talk about that in the design menu. I'll go back to my updated header page so it'll look the way it looked when we first started this tutorial. Let's go ahead and hop back into edit mode, edit site header, and work on the design. Here we go. Looking at this layout, we can now see these three rounded squares inside this image represent where our links will be. If we click this option, they'll be in the center. If we click this option, they'll be on the left and my site title is in the center. And last but not least, we'll have the title over the links. So definitely some interesting layouts to explore. All of these layouts have options for link spacing, which can increase or decrease the space between the links, and then element spacing, which changes the space between different elements. An element will be my set of links, my social media icons, my cart, and my button. Now underneath that is where we can get really creative with the design. We now have options for a drop shadow and a border. Fixed position is another cool feature here as well, but first we'll start with drop shadow. I'm going to click into this option, and here we can choose to have a soft shadow or a strong shadow. Notice the depth change in that page directly underneath it. Our next option for shadow is to change the color. Here I have mine set to a dark gray, but you can choose a color from your color palette or even select a custom color using the color picker option here. After that, we can change the spread, which will increase the size of that shadow, change the distance, which will increase the visible depth, and we can change the blur, making it super blurry or not very blurry at all. Very customizable. Going back to our main design menu, the option underneath drop shadow is border. Here you can choose a color for your border. Again, selecting one from the custom color picker here or choose one that's already assigned in your color palette. After that, you can change the thickness of the border. If you click these three dots, you can manually adjust the thickness or choose one of the presets for large, medium, or small. We'll go ahead and go back to large so we can see what's happening with our border here. Changing the position is our last option. This will outline the entire header. We can also choose to have one on just the top and the bottom, just the top or just the bottom of the header. Now, if you don't like this border option, select remove and it'll go away. Underneath drop shadow and underneath border is the fixed position option. Toggling this on, you'll be able to choose the fixed header style. Selecting basic means the header is going to stay at the top of my page no matter how far down the page I scroll. You can also choose the scroll back option, which means you, the header will disappear when you scroll down the page, but it will show up when you start scrolling back to the top of the page. There are two more options for header design. We have height. This right here is a slider that we can use to increase the height of the header. And then after that, we have full versus inset. When you select inset, it's going to pull the header away from the edge of the screen. Let's talk about changing the color of the header. I have it set to adaptive. Adaptive means it's going to take the color theme from my first section and apply it to the header. That's why those other pages showed up as light blue. Now what we can do is select gradient and create our own set of colors. Here we can select whatever background color we want and we can have it fade slightly or significantly. We can also change the navigation color. If you want the links to be a different color, maybe select a bright red from the color picker. Now my site title is also a link, so that's going to change as well. After that, we have the solid option. This is no longer creating a gradient, but it allows us to assign a background color, navigation color, and adjust the opacity of that header. If we have an image behind it, changing this opacity will make it more transparent. Blur background is another interesting option. Let's go ahead and add a picture to our first page section here. We're in edit mode, so this will be easy. I'll select edit section. We will add an image. We'll grab one from my library. I've got a cool one with space right here. Let's go with that. And now hopping back into edit site header and selecting design, Clicking on the color option, here we can adjust the opacity and notice we can start to see that space background behind the header of our website. We also have the blur background option. Toggling this off, we will see that image in full resolution. But if we blur the background a little bit, we can adjust the blur amount to make it easier to read our links when they're on top of the image. Definitely a cool new feature inside our design menu. Now I've got to show you one last time how the heck we got to all of these options. We'll select save and we'll select exit. From edit mode on any page on your website, hover over the header until you see edit site header. 
On the left-hand side, you'll be able to toggle on the elements like your button, your social links, and your cart. Anything that's enabled on the header, if you click on that option and you see this blue outline, you'll be able to see an edit button. That will open up the menu for you to change the content and design for each one of those elements. Under edit design is where you can change the layout. This changes the alignment of your links in your main navigation, as well as all of the other elements in your header. You can adjust the spacing and you can add interesting effects like a drop shadow, a border, or set it to a fixed position so it will always be at the top of your screen. This is also where you adjust the height of the header. Under the color option here is where you can assign a solid color, giving it a background color, navigation color. You can also change the opacity and blur the background. Lots of fun stuff to explore if you have an image for your first page section. Instead of solid, you can select gradient and you can also select adaptive. When you select adaptive, the header is going to update its design so it matches what you have assigned for the very first page section color theme on that specific page. Now, last but not least, let's talk about the mobile view. When we click on the mobile view option and select edit design, you'll see the options specifically for the mobile version of your website. Here we can change the layout, changing where the icon for the elements are, as well as the logo and the actual icon that opens up our website menu. Then we can add the drop shadow and a unique border specific for the mobile version of our website. Under color, here's where you can select the specific colors, be it solid, gradient, or adaptive. And just like the desktop version of your site, when you select adaptive, the colors for your mobile menu and your mobile header will match the color theme assigned to the very first page section on that specific page. The other option you'll see here for mobile is to view menu. If you select view menu, you're going to see a new edit design option. Clicking on this is how you change the alignment and the link spacing for the mobile menu of your Squarespace website. This is where you can also change the color, and unlike the previous option, here we have to select a color theme where the background and link colors have been decided based on what we've selected using the site styles menu here inside Squarespace. Now again, to reach this menu, when you're in the mobile view of your website, select view menu and then select edit design, and you can change the alignment, the link spacing, and the color for the mobile menu of your Squarespace website. The last design option for mobile that you should know about is how to change the icon. When you click on the menu option here and select edit menu, here you'll be able to choose a different icon to access the mobile menu of your Squarespace website, and you can also change the thickness of that line. Underneath this video, you'll find links to related content that will help you customize your Squarespace website even more. So if you're ready to do more with your design, definitely check those out. Thank you so much for watching this overview. I truly hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a like and let me know in the comments and feel free to share it with all of your Squarespace friends. Thanks so much for watching. And most importantly, have fun with your Squarespace website. Bye for now. Find everything you need to make Squarespace uniquely yours at insidethesquare.co. That's insidethesquare.co.